remember a time when we began the center, and it was in that kind of exciting, informative time uh, where we were building the center, growing membership, and really trying to even find for ourselves, working with the industry folks and the government folks that we had with members, what the value was that we could offer from that center amongst ourselves and the faculty the universities we had. And that's really where all centers are, such as you did in the first year. So what I'd like to do uh, is talk about that. Also, again, there's some in the room that are, that are interested in how the model works. Really emphasize that, offer opportunities for questions, and also give you an opportunity to see how you know, some success stories from other centers and when you, when you develop and things work properly, what kind of great outcomes you can have. So currently your status, right, is you've begun you in your first year uh, with the University of Illinois, you're phase one. Again, in NSF vernacular, there are actually three phases that an IUCRC can have, and that's each of five years. So you're in your first five-year phase of operation as a single university center. And he is, is your evaluator. And we'll talk a lot more about the evaluative component of IUCRCs as we move on. So again, given that you're really talking about establishing a solid foundation during this first year, and again, this is now, and to make it very clear, I think Brian mentioned this, it's not only the, the, the faculty and the, and the center administration or center leadership, but also the IAD, as you'll see throughout the conversation here in the presentation and throughout the day's efforts, it's really um, the center as a whole that has to work on its way forward. So um, let me just go back here. What I'd like to do is talk about what our role in it is at the NSF with respect to IUCRCs. And again, talk about some successful IUCRCs and again, specifically about uh, Chapman in phase one. So, where do we sit? Well, within the engineering directorate at NSF, uh, we are, as you see over on the far side here, uh, in a uh, industrial innovations and partnerships section. Some of you are familiar with and you've heard, again, engineering research centers are sitting over here in education centers. Here are the standard engineering directorates. So, where we are in IIP, uh, industrial Innovations and Partnerships is really in a, in a unique organization within the National Science Foundation. All of, all of the directorates, all of the programs work with industry. We're specifically targeting developing partnerships and relationships with industry that are long lasting. And that's going to be a recurring theme as you see with the IUCAC program. Kind of blocked off here a little bit on the, on the right hand side as you see the, all of the NSF SBIR programs are housed within IIP. And then over on this left side, you see the Industry University Cooperative Research Centers program, uh, as well as other programs that really are now kind of the academic facing side. So trying to find uh, ideal ways to interface academic activities uh, with the industry sector. And I just note, because we'll, we'll bring this up a little bit later on, uh, and again, I'm sure Babu, who sends his, his hello, who's here at the previous meeting, um, you know, he showed you this chart, and I'm sure that you were very attentive to the org charts when we showed them. There's actually a change, significant change on this chart. And I'm not going to ask you because I, I, <laughs> what it is. It's here. It's a brand new component um, that's built on here. And actually, some of you may be familiar with Partnerships for Innovation, Sally Miller's program. Uh, accelerating Innovative Research or Innovation Research is relatively new. As a matter of fact, a brand new solicitation came out. We'll talk a little bit about more later. I Corps is here. The point of this new segment is really to bring together programs that are really targeting, taking the great innovation discovery that's come from NSF funded programs and really try to bring them a little more close to commercialization, assess whether or not they might be ready for the marketplace. Okay, again, working with some small seed funding. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. We'll also talk with respect to the AIR program and PFI, again, how well again, IUCRCs are faring. And it turns out, because of the relationships you develop as a result of these centers, these fairly large programs, uh, the universities and these centers fare quite well. So, from there,
So the IUCRC program itself, the fundamental mission is really to develop the innovative capacity of the United States uh, and doing so by virtue of developing partnerships between industry and academia and involving graduate students in that process to develop the workforce through the execution of those projects. The key thing, again, having been a, a center director and done that for 10 years, I can say, and now looking across the program, the real key, though, in the bedrock of IUCRC is our long-term trusted relationships <coughs> that are based on shared value. And again, that shared value is a key in the way that IUCRC operates. As I mentioned, you guys are at that point where you're trying to define that value uh, for your industry members and the academics involved. Defining it well and uh, maintaining that throughout the life of the center is going to be key. Overall, the center's uh, now number 61 across the United States. This map gives a little indication of, of really the geographic spread, which is significant. We have 168 sites. Uh, again, different universities involved in those 61 centers. So the uh, strong emphasis is on multi-university centers. You know, again, as you are looking towards other partners to, to build the center further. And again, develop the base and create a larger center activities. Uh, what you see between the red and the blue here are really the engineering funded versus size funded uh, centers. Again, computer information science and engineering, that's actually the, the uh, organization or the directorate that funded my center. Uh, and again, engineering are partners in the IUCRC program, both seeing the tremendous value of these centers for linking uh, the academic uh, engine with the, uh, uh, with the efforts in the industry. Over 760 member organizations across all of these 61 centers. So again, significant buy, and we'll talk a little more about that, and, and value derived on the part of the industry. This just shows you over a period of a little over a decade how the, that, that is tracked in terms of large increase in number of sites to go more towards multi-university centers. The IUCRC homepage, if you've got your computer, if you just Google IUCRC homepage, out will come uh, our, our homepage on the NSF site, you'll see an entire directory and listing, again, specifically the industry folks. Um, again, we, we like to show this because if you look at this carefully, you'll see this spans a tremendous number of sectors okay, in, within the United States kind of industrial uh, activities. And in fact, uh, again, it's, it should be noted here that we don't put out an RFP that we'd like to have centered in a particular area. It really is a function of exactly what happened here. It's an organic growth and nucleation of activity around relationships that faculty have with industry and then the interest in bringing that together into a cooperative. So you'll see again these address a variety of areas. The ones in the box there just note the two new centers that came online this year uh, and actually child injury uh, uh, prevention which is director of child injury studies is listed there is directly beneath that box it's not a new center, it used to be a single university center, Ohio State just joined that center, so now it's a multi-university center as well. They started out, as you have done, as a single university center, and then went from there. And again, you're listed under the single university. 45 active engineering centers, and uh, what did you press? <laughs> size centers listed here, 16 across many different areas with respect to uh, computer information sciences and engineering. So uh, what's NSF's role in, in the IUCRC? Uh, again, it's a distinct role and that is that what we're doing is we're providing the cooperative agreement and operational framework for how these centers operate. And as I mentioned, I wanted to talk and spend some time talking about that framework because it's extremely important uh, especially as you're launching now in your first year and you're really starting the rhythm of how a center operates. Uh, all those centers I just showed you operate under the same cooperative framework, same membership agreement. So it does create, you know, as we term it, somewhat of a franchise and that you can collaborate across centers very freely knowing that all of the members are really working under uh, the same agreement. 
you've got best practices, and we'll show you, again, uh, D is here to really provide a, a, a tap to those best practices and help in that process as an evaluation has been done through, through many, many years. We'll mention that. And finally, some funding opportunities to really help to supplement and help create some of that value that we talked about. So let's go back and now look specifically at what the IUCRC model is. Uh, and the key here is that this model really moves away from one-on-one -on -one contracts. So I think we're all familiar with both as industry folks, government folks, uh, and academics with having an individual contract with a specific company or a specific entity, the terms and conditions of that contract, which may differ from the terms and conditions of another contract, and so on. Um, so what you also may from, be familiar with is moving a little beyond that, and that is an industrial affiliates model, as is indicated here. And typically, within an within a organization or a center which has an industrial affiliates model, you have collective ownership of some sort, <coughs> And, but what there usually is is there's one-on-one -on -one decision making. For example, every company has their specific project, and yes, they're willing to share what, what is going on in that project amongst the group, okay? but it basically is that one project. The disadvantages of this model okay, are that, you know, again, you really have subcritical mass for projects. You have that specific project, a specific membership be applied to it, and you can't build larger projects readily. You don't get that sense of community, and again, usually within this environment, the value to a particular member would be much less than the sum of all the research projects that are going on. So the IUCRC program, again, it's uh, work. Um, the IUCRC program looks at a shared portfolio model, where in fact what you have is, again, collective ownership, but also collective decision making. And this is what I'll spend you know, a significant amount of time talking about in the context of other centers, how they operate as well. What occurs with the, with the best practices and the processes that we do, from the life forms to the uh, evaluative program and everything within these centers, those 61 centers that, that I, I just mentioned, is that you have at each meeting a conversation uh, that real, amongst the members, amongst the faculty, that really validates what the needs of that sector or sectors are. Right? That validation then influences and shapes the portfolio uh, and aligns it with the member needs and the capabilities of the faculty and the universities involved. And what you end up with is members which have uh, interest across a broad range of the portfolio as a result of the portfolio being shaped in this way, and the value that they get is significantly greater clearly than the one single project model. And in fact, as I show here, it's actually greater than the sum of the projects because of the interactions that they get amongst the community of members and understanding those community needs. So overall, how is this done within a particular center? Well. You have, specifically, the shared portfolio projects that are agreed to. You went through a process during the first meeting all right, to select a set of projects. You have that initial portfolio which you're starting. Okay? And so now we're doing a review process. That project was selected. Okay? Those projects are all governed by, in terms of intellectual property and everything else, the NSF, the IUCRC agreement, which everyone has. So every industry person in this room Every government person effectively signs it, okay? But every industry person, every IAB member knows that the person sitting next to them is operating under the same agreement. They don't have a special deal. They don't have a different deal. Everybody's working under the same, uh, the same agreement in the center. Those projects are cooperatively selected, okay? And the key thing that I would always like to point out is, yes, the pooled membership funds. So the membership funds create the resources for funding the research. Right? But let's not forget, again, you've heard the, the universities speak this morning. We have a number of university representatives. The universities are also contributing to this pool. And they're contributing by virtue of the fact that that membership agreement says that they can charge at most 10% indirect on the membership fees. Okay? So there is a shared contribution again, to this 
the execution of these projects. Why? Well, the university sees that it builds and it helps them. We'll talk a little more about that. And again, the, the membership, by virtue of the fact that they bought in and they're sitting here, okay, see value from a pre-competitive perspective okay, amongst those projects that are being done. So all value is being derived from, from that portfolio by all of the, uh, the members of the center. So what's the value that gets derived from these centers? Well, it's really, as is shown up here in blue, the outcomes that come from a cooperatively selected and managed uh, portfolio of pre-competitive so the discussions that the IAB undergoes okay, in the selection of these projects, all right, the life form presentations, and we'll talk a little more about this, what this does is it percolates the discussion up to a level of, you know what, I see things that are we're not directly competing amongst ourselves on as companies, but we know down the road are going to be enabling to us. We can take those results, we can bring them back in a continuous fashion to our, to our organizations, and we can derive value from them and add value to them in our, in our organizations. From the center faculty perspective, okay, they're seeing from some intersection of those needs that we just described with theirs, and we really then get this IUCRC research domain, right, where again, you get shared value on the part of both, of the, uh, both the faculty of the center and the, uh, the members of the IAB. The value that you see on your handouts, uh, which are blocked here, and these are really stemming from the membership agreement. Right? You have leveraging of those small amounts of funds you put in, depending on your membership and your interest in the portfolio, could be five, ten times leveraging of your dollar investment, and then research, research that's actually coming back to you, access to students, pre-publication access continually over the project. Okay, of, interactions and other things with the center and its and its activities. And on the academic side, we also have value derived. Again, the interaction with industry really keeps well aligned the activities of the research programs of, of the faculty. They can leverage the proof of concept results for other funding. This is also turning out to be key, and I'll show you this in a bit with other centers, is trusted relationships with industry based on delivery, based on, on clear outcomes that have been achieved and value derived, provide relationships that you can use for other, other um, activities and other opportunities that exist that come down the road where you can have teaming between your industry partners and academics. So there's ready partners. This kind of environment is really stimulating and great for student recruitment, retention, and placement. We see our students from IUCRC's placed. As a matter of fact, I know in my center and the number of centers I've visited, it's, it, we have students sitting as IAB members uh, now judging our projects, which is a great kind of cycle, but it's somewhat unsettling okay, uh, to a faculty member. But it's, it's actually wonderful because you're, you're seeing this complete cycle when you're in place for 10 or more years You'll see this, and it's a, it's a, again, it's a wonderful thing. And again, that's a, you know, a great example of a, of a good relationship that's uh, really based on trust. And finally, from an institutional perspective, you see that, again, uh, University of Illinois is a land-grant institution. What better way than an IUCRC to, fulfill, to fulfill your mission in terms of reaching out to industry uh, and providing really you know, the 21st century uh, uh, outcome for a land-grant institution in building uh, industrial capacity. So, the overall program, since its inception, uh, first five centers started in 1980 uh, and began at that time with an evaluative program. Again, D represents this program. If you Google IUCRC evaluation project or evaluation, um, you'll come up with a North Carolina State University website that has all comprehensive data that has been gathered in you know, structural data on the program. You see kind of some, some insets and some examples of it here that show you what the program has done over now over 30 years, okay, based on these operating principles that I've described to you. Okay. And again, 
this assessment allows us to really look broadly at the overall program and say, okay, are we achieving that obje those objectives of increasing the innovative capacity? Are we providing, you know, both globally as well as at individual centers value to members? And what I'd like to do now is give a couple, three examples of some recent studies through the evaluative program that show some of these are those outcomes from centers uh, that you want to be able to target and ultimately with your center by virtue of its operation and, and uh, uh, activities show value to your members. What this is, is the funding trend all the way from uh, uh, actually the inception of the program, uh, 1980 all the way to the most recent measured year, 2010. Okay, the 2011 numbers are just going to be added to this, but they're, they're similar. Um, first thing I'll show from when I, when I or talk about when I show this is I say, you know, again, in IUCRC, uh, D and I sit in the back. Okay? And the reason why we sit in the back is the IAB needs to be sitting in the front. Okay? The IAB uh, is really the group that runs the center. Why? Just look at the money. Okay? If you look at this, this red portion, pink portion, um, those are the IAB funds across all centers. All right? that fund the research activities, those projects that I showed in that other diagram, all right? The IABs decide with the faculty, with the leadership, which things get funded, what the direction of the center is. Right? What's on top of this, okay, above here is really leveraging, okay? So again, this bops around based on funding, but using that project portfolio, that pre-competitive project to then take and either the academics alone, the academics with their industry members, go out for other funding, receive that funding, bring it back into the center, and again, the cycle starts again, and we start and feed that back in to create new ideas and other things within the center. Okay, so again, those additional leverage funding is significant uh, within the program. The IUCRC funding is fairly small. What you get from the program are those the operational funds, the capabilities, okay, for getting supplemental funding, to be able to develop activities uh, further within your center. So again, C funding. The red uh, bracketed area, one of the evaluative uh, uh, studies that was done, 0708, surveys were done of, of members across the United States, all right, from all those 61 centers, and they asked the question, they said, well, um, what kind of uh, projects and activities did this actually spur within your organization? And can you perhaps give a value to that? And from that uh, sampling, about, if you look at that, it's about $20 million across the program was done in the shared uh, pre-competitive portfolios, right, across all these centers. And it's about $100 million was found to be uh, done in work that was generated back in those companies, back in those IAB members' organizations, based on those research uh, results within the shared portfolio. Why? Again, those shared portfolios are addressing pre-competitive needs. They know these are issues. The universities are a fairly low-cost way to get these, this work done. They reduce the risk by virtue of, a, of an outcome that's, that says to the industry members, look, this is going to work or this is not going to work, okay? So it's either cost savings or cost avoidance, all right, in terms of, uh, of the companies. And as soon as it's determined that the proof of concept is, it looks like it's going to work, usually before the project is even over with, the company will then start some activity within their organization that parallels it and bring it further. And those are those investments that are captured here. So again, typically, if we take that year as an example, it's a five to one, uh, number in terms of membership investment versus in the center versus investment in, by the companies across the center. So again, value continuously being derived by the portfolio and being tapped back into the, uh, uh, into the center. <coughs> I think I've got it on the tap twice and don't do anything else. <laughs> okay. So another example. Um, again, Three very different centers. Here they are down here for the acronyms, right? You guys have your own acronyms. It's not pronounceable, but um, here you go. Intelligent Maintenance Systems, Berkeley Sensors and Actuators. 
very, very long-standing cent uh, center at Berkeley. Uh, actually, we owe all our airbags to that center. They've done the MEMS work way back in the late 80s uh, uh, for that, that work. And again, industrial, uh, and again, the surfactant center. Not going into the details here, you have the slide. Uh, tremendous value as you look across in terms of the benefits. Again, some of them extremely large. Again, very you know, modest in between extremely large in terms of benefit cost ratio. Uh, the membership dollars put in versus what came out in terms of process improvements uh, within those companies, new technologies and others. Uh, again, some across these three you got over a billion dollars, all right, that was that was derived from these. So again, uh, where you guys are in your first year, I'm sure you're going to be performing like this, right? Uh, at some point. Right? But it does take time. It, it definitely takes time and it takes those relationships. And again, and it takes the, the IAB to be strongly engaged with what's going on within the center uh, and giving feedback and deriving that value. Another outcome. Remember I mentioned on that org chart, the AIR program, Accelerating Innovation Research. 2010 was the first solicitation. Um, they just got a solicitation, actually, is that Brian should have gotten that via email on the director's list, okay? So, and it's available on the website. Air option two is all, is only open to centers, SDCs, you know, nano centers, IUCRCs, ERCs, let say SDCs, okay? And also other organizations formed from NSF activities, so partnerships for innovation also filled in there too. It's all about, again, based on relationships, developing innovative capacity, innovation ecosystems. 2010 pilot, there were seven awards, four of them went to IUCRCs. And that's not, again, why? Really those relationships, well developed, those opportunities for partnering already there. Again, uh, everyone, you know, people know each other well, they know their capabilities, they know what the areas that need to be addressed are. The other three were PFI awardees, and again, the new solicitations there. So again, IUCRCs that are um, operating well and very competitive for these opportunities. I'll show this now in this context. Um, if we look in terms of the, uh, of the opportunities that the IUCRC program does provide centers, we're providing supplementary funding really to, as it says on the top there, facilitate that cooperative environment, okay, and to be able to develop the, the capacity and linkage between the uh, IAD and the universities involved. So one key thing which you should start considering uh, is the fundamental research program. It is, it is actually not done as a supplement, it's a separate award, only open to IUCRCs, but what the fundamental does is it really allows, as you're really defining your scopes of research, you've got a new area that you feel that your I will help in, in developing your IAB, providing more value to your current members, as well as even expanding into new areas. The fundamental is 200K, okay, total for two years. Um, but what it does is with IAB, you know, strong support, it provides an opportunity to, to, you know, without taking money from your portfolio dollars, your shared dollars across all your members, to launch into a different area or expand a different area that then you can start applying, say, your membership dollars, too, as you cultivate it uh, and, and open it for, for work. So again, that's actually due February 1, 2012, okay? Those are due every February, once a year. You have federal members already. You're probably already using the MIPR vehicle. If you're interested in, and you have other federal members, again, the MIPR, which is a military interagency procurement request, okay? Uh, that is actually a means to be able to transfer funds, transfer it to the NSF, and then we provide it to a supplement, through a supplement to the center. So it's a great, easy way for federal members, federal organizations to be members of the center. And finally, there's a variety of, of supplementary funding uh, opportunities, including, uh, you know, again, you're all familiar with REUs and RETs for you know, involving undergraduates, teachers. There's now also experiences for veterans, uh, involving SBR, SDTR organizations that are phase two NSF grantees. And again, collaboration between centers, if you see opportunities for that. 
uh, there's opportunities, and finally international collaborations. I'm not going to go into great detail of these. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions offline if you have an opportunity. You know, you want to focus on forming your center and making it a solid foundation right now, okay? But the other issue is uh, you need to really contact us because just from a budgetary perspective, we, don't, you know, we still don't have clarity with respect to budget. And so supplementary funding is always you know, on hold or, or uh, unsure until we know what our, our firm budget is, okay? So if you have ideas along these lines, please talk to us, but uh, you know, we can then tell you the, the, uh, what the situation is, okay? But again, as a new center forming, please use these to best effect to be able to build and, uh, and secure your foundation. And finally, I mentioned i -Corps. Um i -Corps is a brand new program. There's opportunities, and I think the uh, University of Illinois is already playing in this, okay, with a few awards. But I would just, for the faculty in the room, if you're not aware of this, or, again, if you have current or prior NSF funded work, it's a great opportunity if you're interested in taking some of that work, not doing further research, but bringing it, doing some further proof of concept to be able to bring uh, a demonstration to potential partners. Okay, it's a, it's a small award, it's an initiation where it's a 50K award, uh, maximum 10% overhead on that from the universities. Okay, but the, the beauty of this, it's an opportunity to bring faculty who might be interested in, in for example, starting a company, bringing them a ways to that. Uh, we do training uh, through the Stanford program where they go out, they take a class there, come back. There's an educational component too where the expectation is you're training these faculty, they can come back and integrate some of this within the classroom as well in terms of entrepreneurship and, uh, and startup training. So again, great opportunity. Very quick turnaround of the proposals, and there's opportunities four times a year. So again, it's a very serious effort to engage and, and uh, see if the community uh, has interest uh, in these. So with that, the, the final component of my talk is really now, we've, we've talked about the NSS role, the evaluation, some success stories, some things, operational characteristics that are key in the operation of a successful center, some of the great outcomes you'll have, some of the supplementary funding opportunities to support generation of the processes that will, will help to create those outcomes. Now let's talk specifically uh, about CAP and, uh, and really focus on where you are now in phase one. So really what you're at a point now is that you're, as Brian mentioned, you started your projects, you're going through this process of review at this meeting. We'll be doing another project selection at the next meeting. Okay, so you're actually, as we'll show, going through one whole cycle of the center. What you want to do is really be working on developing that foundation. This is where the IAB members are absolutely critical in providing feedback of what their expectations are, not only at these meetings, but more importantly, between the meetings. And we'll talk more about that uh, in a bit. So again, effective, establishing effective, consistent center operations. We as academics, you know, are, are trained not to do the same thing every time, right? Just, it's really important to be consistent and do, set your processes and do them consistently time and time again, okay, in terms of delivery of what these projects, from your projects and how you are presenting and so on. And I see you're, you're already doing that within the center. The IAB needs to provide feedback on how that's done with the presentation of financials, cooperative portfolio selection, of communications between meetings, and so on. Also, in terms of membership, retention, and recruiting, as a single university center, that's paramount to you, right? Because the threshold is high for membership. So, the IAB at this meeting, we'll talk about this this afternoon, providing feedback from your perspective. Who do you want to see sitting around or at these tables? Okay, that are within your sector that would add value to you in the conversation that goes on with respect to defining the portfolio of this center. Okay, so it's not, you know, yes, the, the university involved with uh, Brian and his people need to do that recruiting, but they also need your assistance in helping to target that effectively. Because uh, ultimately it's a value to you as well. And finally, the operation of the IAB, how you want to function uh, want to implement bylaws and so on. 
major part of this as we move forward is, in, in a center is, you have, and Brian showed this diagram of these, these three areas that are overlapping, and it, it hits a niche amongst them uh, in the center of what it's looking to do. But really trying to implement a strategic roadmap for research. Again, various centers do this to varying degrees and in various ways. But what this does is it provides a great way, if you look now at this next topic, about building project lifecycle processes, okay? When it comes time, and this is the major thing that really needs to be accomplished at this meeting as well, is you really need to set in motion, or at least agree on the framework for how you're going to solicit projects for the next cycle. Okay, so how is that done? From the standpoint of this roadmap, a roadmap usually will help to identify gaps, okay, critical needs across the IAB that the, the uh, university can address. And again, those can be the areas that in fact you can, you would be the primaries, for example, that would be key for proposals on the next cycle. So you, you really want to look at building the IAB a project process to maximize its value to them. Everything from how to cultivate new projects, how to do recording, both at meetings and between meetings. We were talking last night about you know, potential webinars and other things that you would have on a monthly basis that, again, all members would be aware of and can attend as, they, as, they would, uh, uh, as they're able. So to maintain that connection and that feedback. And again, final project reporting. Doing this in a way that maximizes value. And again, by doing so, you'll end up with uh, the ability on the part of the center to really hone their message as they're going out and recruiting and also hone the reputation of the institute of, of this uh, organization in the discipline and, and the disciplines that are reflected here because the word of mouth will get out that from the industry members from the government members the value is being derived and it'll, it takes a number of years but eventually people will start coming to you uh, and again that's the key and that's always based on the value that they derive. So where you sit now in this process is you have gone through now a process at the last meeting, right, when Babu was here, to select your initial set of projects. So you had your, basically your new proposal set, you had some cultivation process from your planning meeting. You went through the life form, the level of interest and feedback evaluation. Again, the key thing within the center. We'll talk about that more in a bit. You've reviewed, you've discussed, you've adapted those projects, you've done a selection, and in fact, you went ahead and you moved now um, through about a six month period through which there was IAB engagement. Again, initially, when you're first starting out a center, it's tough to do that initially because the communication framework is not there, members are still coming on. Okay, and there's some flux in this project set even initially through this first six months, okay? But now you're in, we're up at this second meeting, okay, this fall meeting for you. We're gonna go through this process again, we're gonna get the feedback. And the key thing here is you're gonna refine those projects based on those feedbacks. Hopefully we'll get a lot of interest in the projects as well as interest with change. In other words, can you do this? Can you do this slightly differently, okay? That's going to refine them. And again, what this all does by the completion of the project is it really tightly binds, especially as we run through this process multiple times, people get more used to what it does and how you can make use of it, tightly binds the member needs to the capabilities of the university's law. Okay? This process is essential to really deriving value. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention along these lines is you guys went through, and actually D is going to work through a set of uh, uh, life processes, okay? Level of interest and feedback evaluation, okay? Going through this cycle, we're now through the review cycle. What I decided to do is uh, create a new slide here that just talks a little bit about this process and gives you a sense of how this works, okay? Especially as you're starting a center, and this is not unique to you, but this happens to every center. And again, the, the centers I love to go to the most are planning grants, okay, as well as first IAB, second IAB meetings, because things are really formative, okay? They're just gelling. 
And so it is very important to kind of understand and see the dynamic. And it's very important that the leadership of the center, as well as the IB, knows how to you know, get a sense and start reading the figures that they're getting with respect to the life process and also, you know, obviously, what they're hearing in the, in the meetings. The key thing uh, as you move forward is you can maximize this value if the evaluation, IAB engagement are in place. Remember that cycle. They're connected to the projects. Not only, you know, yes, a single company, but a group of companies with a shared interest. And also, the thing that's blocked out up here on the slide from, with, the, uh, with the video image is, is center operations that are grounded in really sound project management. It's pretty, you know, it's basic project management, all right? With great reporting, boil down to what's the value, what are the, what are the, the impediments, how are we going to get around them, and so on. So those webinars that you might have between meetings, on a monthly or whatever basis you decide, okay, stress those, stress the value that you can get out, the IAB can, can really help to structure those. So if things are going right, what might you see from a life evaluation if you go through, let's say, the first three or four meetings of a, of a center? So what I've shown here is, again, the level of interest in feedback evaluation. For those of you who are new, Dee's going to talk more about this, okay? But what you will see is you will see uh, a form online, and you'll see uh, you know, there's paper forms actually in the back of your book if you've never seen one of these before, okay? So if, you go to, if you're an IAB member, if you go to the back of the book, you'll see there is a tick off for very interested, interested, interested with change, okay? <coughs> Uh, and then it's abstain and or not interested in abstain. So what I'm showing here is, let's say it's, it, it's a brand new center, you've gone through your planning grant, you've had your first IAB meeting, you select five projects, all right, you've had a discussion about those. Here they're shown here. And so they're awarded. And you look back at the, at the life form, and what you see is you see, all right, what I'm showing here with the slash the green numbers, the number of members very interested or interested, and then on the other side of the slash, we're interested with change. Okay, and again, as Dee will tell you, the interested with change are, are really most valuable. But what you see here is okay, let's say there's maybe six or eight members at this center. All right, you're really seeing someone, you know, a situation which is very common in centers where members are interested in their particular project. Okay, because that's really kind of what brought them into the center, and you know, that's that's. Uh, perfectly understandable, all right? And there's not a lot of interest across, all right? If we had, these numbers could potentially have, if there were eight members, eight, 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 all of them, everyone could say they're very interested in every last project, okay, on this. But what you're seeing here is people are cautiously saying, yes, I'm really interested in only my project, with a couple of them, all right, are saying, okay, maybe I'm interested in this one with some changes, all right? So, now, we go through to the fall meeting, okay? And this is key, and you, you're tired of me saying this already, I'm sure. And that is what happens between the meetings are, is absolutely essential, both on the, on the faculty side and on the IAB side. It's, it's critically important that the faculty really look and review the life forms, okay? They understand, talk to the IAB members if they were inter so interested with change, so that they can say, well, okay, that's within scope. I can adapt this project. I can achieve that. All right? It's critical that the IAB get involved in this process through these meetings between, uh, between these uh, twice yearly meetings, between the updates. Okay? And again, you can do that by virtue of having assigned mentors to projects <coughs> and so on. And when you do that, when you come back for the next meeting, so again, this was the first meeting, here's the second meeting. You know, again, ideally you're going to see a shift. You're going to start to see a shift in these numbers. You're going to see more who are very interested or interested, as indicated by the number on the right with these double numbers. And again, you're seeing some of the added interest in projects. And ultimately, what do we do? We go through this cycle again, <coughs> coming to the year conclusion with more feedback, okay, from that meeting. And by the project's conclusion, this is assuming a one-year project, okay, you're seeing some strong numbers in terms of, you know what, I'm either interested or very interested in the outcomes from this. 
That doesn't mean you've been waiting as an IED member till the very end to get your outcomes. You've been getting your outcomes all along. You've been interacting and, and pulling results from those and using those results. Okay? That's part of the reason now you say that you're interested and very interested. Okay, so seeing this migration of numbers is a, would be a wonderful thing. Okay, and it's very typical of a sector <coughs> as you're starting to grow and emerge. The final portion of this is, and this is going to be where you guys are going to be at the next meeting. Remember I said the selection of new projects is going to be very important. Uh, and how you're going to do that, the IAB needs to talk about with the, with the center directors this afternoon. All right? But you may have a roadmap by then to help to, uh, or at least some, some rough one to do that. If you don't, you still have a lot of information, right? So what do you have? You have one year, well you basically have two cycles of the life process. You have extensive discussions with the IAB both between meetings and at meetings, all right? You know really what things as you went through this process were starting to resonate where there were shared interests across the IAB that they either directly stated, all right, to you and come to that conclusion and said, you know, this is where we want projects, or alternatively, you glean by virtue of the discussions. And then when you start in, and you start with that first project set, you've gone ahead, they've decided what it's going to be. If you were to look at those life forms after the fact, you might typically see, again, now versus this situation, you see based on the, the better direction of these projects to areas where you know there's shared need and there's interest on the part of the IAB, a beginning position where there's really a more uniform interest across the membership. So again, effectively using all of the time, all of the interaction, both in the meetings, between meetings, and, and the, the tools that we have, such as the life process, uh, to be able to really you know, evoke discussion and decide what those areas are where we can talk about having pre-competitive research that's going to be of shared value across the membership is, is really key in deriving value. I've noted on the side here, this is again another evaluation result across all centers across the country, those 61 centers. If you look across all centers, it's between 40 and, you know, an average member of a center will be interested between 40 and 50 percent of, they'll either be interested or very interested, you know, to click off on the light in 40 to 50 percent of the projects within their center. Okay? There are some centers which are much higher than that. Okay? There are some centers which are lower than that. Right? So again, it's a, it's, a key, uh, it's, a, it's a key metric that you'll look at, that the IAB will look at, should be looking at, D will be looking at, the center leadership will be looking at, and C, how can we maximize that? Again, uh, that will be key in, in the success of the center. Finally, last slide. There was a lot of talk about ERCs and IUCRCs. I don't have STCs on here, okay? But especially in Illinois, you guys have a lot of major centers, okay? And that's why, again, this center has a great opportunity to tap into these centers, okay? And tap into that capability. So this can really be the, you know, the the, uh, the interface for that. So we do have a we have a slide that I pulled out and I added to the deck. This is not in yours, uh, but I did it last night after the, the reception discussion to just look at two cases, an ERC, and this kind of goes for an STC too, versus what an IUCRC is. And this is helpful also to the, the industry folks who might be involved in some of, let's say, the ERCs or STCs too. So in the case of an, an ERC, right, these are, again, two complementary programs, but different. So in the case of an ERC, right, there's a solicitation, and, and in some cases, an RFP in defined areas. For example, if just one was looking at some nano areas. But if you look at the funding sources, right, NSF dollars are dominant in this scenario. So this is just a representative pie chart where the NSF dollars are really there to, again, correctly so, be able to really forward a uh, research agenda of that center which has been proposed okay, uh, by the university or universities involved. Again, there's some perhaps university contribution and then there's uh, industry dollars. Okay, that might be associated with that, not initially uh, afterwards. If you look at an IUCRC, right, again, I already mentioned, we don't say what areas. It really depends on the organizations involved and the needs of the sectors and the universities. 
the funding makeup is significantly different. And again, this really reflects back to remember that chart I showed you with funding of the program since its inception. Okay, the industry and agency dollars that are members really drive this. The university is much larger because they're giving that overhead contribution. Okay, and NSF is the smallest dollar contribution in this environment because the people who are running this are really this based on our best practices and framework. The other thing is in terms of operation of the center, okay, we have a research and education program in an ERC that follows the proposed plan, all right, and really the industry signs up to this research direction. Right? And agreements can vary across, the, uh, you know, across different ERCs. Here, within this center and in other IUCRCs, the other 60 IUCRCs, right, the research is cooperatively defined and it's sector relevant. Okay. Uh, to based on the IOB interactions and all the things that we've talked about. And so the industry and the center shaped the research direction and plan. Yes, when, when Brian submitted the proposal, uh, there was a research plan, but that will be modulated and adapted based on the IOB and the feedback, the life process, and where you're going as a direction. Uh, because ultimately, he was gonna, he's going to be recruiting members to this. And again, they're only going to come as members based on the value that they derive and the effectiveness of that plan and providing that value. And again, there's that universal kind of uniform cooperative agreement that we talked about that all members saw. We can adapt, and again, as we talked about, you're a single university, you can become multi-university in time based on, on needs and, and shared value, okay? Uh, again, from an ERC perspective or SDC, they tend to be as defined and then proceed. So I wanted to show this just to give you a, you know, see how these two are complementary in terms of how they're organized, how they're funded, and really how the research agenda is driven by, by the organizations. So you get a feel, again, this just echoes whether it be the evaluation, whether it be the funding model, the key role of the industry um, sectors in really finding the direction of, of an IUCRC. So with that, that concludes my presentation. Um, and. Uh, my contact information is there, Babu's, which I believe you already have, and others. Uh, uh, and again, Alex, uh, the founder of the program, is still with the program as a consultant uh, as well. So if there's any questions, you know, I'm happy to ask them now or answer them now. Uh, and also, he and I will both be here for the duration of the day. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to address them. Larry? Um, yes. I, I'm just wondering, the, of the 61, the fact that you know, industry interest here is pretty broad. But are the other centers like that too, or are they more cohesive in after a particular industry sector? Great question. Uh, there are both, okay. Uh, there are ones which are very, uh, very targeted, okay. And there are ones which have multiple areas, okay. So it is, it, it is more challenging when you have multiple areas. No question about that. And so the key there is, and this is, now goes back to the discussion that we may want to engage in this afternoon, is as you start looking at, at really operating cooperative, and again, that's, a, that's my strongest message to you, and that is, I know, from an industry perspective, the hardest kind of pill to swallow in some cases, okay? But operating in that mode will ultimately give you the most value. What many centers will do, and I'm not sure, if you, you know, they probably did the standard voting last time, okay? Um, what the IAB can make a decision about as they move forward and feel more comfortable is they can say, you know what, it's important that we have projects in these particular areas. So they'll go through the voting of the selection of projects and they'll engage in discussion of, okay, we want to make sure we have so much of our portfolio in this area, in this area, or in this area. Okay, and so whereas a center, as you described, it's a single focus, really, you know, you don't have to go there. I'm just trying to think. Actually, even, even in my own center, we, we had this issue with the single focus. They, our planning and our first meeting, we were providing proposals all over the place. And actually, our IAB, IAB really cut us back to a very central focus. But what happened is, as you know, every area has got sub-areas. And so we started now having that conversation just about sub-areas within that area. So, and it really was driven by what the IAB wanted to do. Okay? So this is why, you know, industry folks are key in this, because you have that, that perspective, 
Uh, and so that, that discussion needs to be uh, entered probably this afternoon as to how you want to manage that. Uh, and, and do you want to, I just got back from another meeting, uh, actually I'll name the name, the Center for Metamaterials, okay, uh, CUNY and uh, UNC Charlotte, okay, are, are in that. And in fact, um, you know, they're, they're trying to obtain focus. As a matter of fact, their members are, are saying, you know, you need to focus. You can have multiple areas, and again, I use them as an example, but many centers go through this. And so what they're saying is, well, you know, we want to recruit in these other areas, but okay, the IAB decided we're going to take this one area, okay, and yeah, our portfolio, if you did the distribution across these three areas, it has the, the peak of the distribution, and it has smaller projects or <coughs> less projects in these other areas. And the reason they wanted to maintain those other projects is they wanted to use those as recruiting tools, okay, to go out, and the IAB helped them to, to locate some companies. So that's one strategy. How that? How do you deal with that? Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, again, be happy to answer any questions as we go through. Today. Well, thanks very much okay, for sure. coming to our meeting and uh, helping us learn how the you know, IUCRCs are best operated. So I, I noticed that before uh, Dean had to give your talk, I know that some people joined us and we had several people that are on uh, WebEx. Um, so maybe we could just continue our introductions really briefly. Can, can the people on WebEx speak to us or can they only, can they only hear? Some of them are muted. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, I'm going to waste it. Mr. Paul, do you 